Over $85,000 in comic sales on this hot 10 in the last seven days. And number one is a doozy. I have never seen something like this take place in such a short amount of time. You have to stay tuned for number one because it's astounding how many copies have sold of this book. Number 10 on the list, we have the first solo Joker story that came out in 1975. We have Joker number one. It's a cool book. Many, many people like this book. It's a Joker one. It's mid-70s. It's still vintage enough. So a lot of people get into it. And obviously the movie is adding a little bit more hype. This book was down in the toilet just two years ago, like for no really good reason. And we're seeing it rise again, which is great for the comic market and for collectors and something that's really deserves that much appreciation. But let's take a look at some of these numbers. And then we're also going to discuss the effect of this movie and what's coming in it. $1,200 in sales above the 12-month average took place this week, and 8.5 is up 16%. The 9.0 is up 12% with a $197 sale, and the 9.6 up 28% with a $546 sale. Latest trailer just dropped, and I'm all in. I love what they're doing here. It looks like a love story based in some type of insanity, based in reality. I have no idea what's going to happen, but there's a lot of fire. There's a lot of explosions. There's a lot of just wild going on, and I'm all in for it. I have confidence in Joaquin Phoenix. He will crush this role. Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata, a.k.a. <laughs> Lady Gaga, I think she will too. She's a decent actress. She's had some hits. So I'm excited for this movie. I hope you are too. If not, comment down below. If so, comment anyway. Give yourself a solid and download Key Collector Comics. This is an app I use every single day to catalog comic books, to learn about funny books, and to get access to the very list we make this video on. And you can get access to the comics that we talk about before we even hit the mic. Number nine on the list, love this book, ASM 361, the first full appearance of Carnage. We got Cletus Cassidy goodness, 12 sales above the recent 12-month average, totaling over $2,800 in sales. The 9.6? up 26%, and three copies outperformed the recent 12-month average. Then we have the second printing, the 9.8, and I've always loved this cover. That silver background, powerful, selling for $309. That's an increase of 57%. What's going on? The 9.8 sold for $454. That's up 34%, and three 9.8s outsold the recent 12-month average. And then we got the Newsy, 9.8. Whoa, selling for barely above the last number I just reported on, $475. Only 1% above the recent 12-month average seems a little soft for a book that came out in 1992. We're looking at under 10% of that print run being a newsstand. Keep a lookout on those barcodes. I think what's happening right now is we're getting Venom hype because the movie's like a month away. Null is clearly inbound. There's a reason why people are specking on Spidey and Symbiote Keys. Maybe this is an opportunity to bring Carnage back on the big screen and maybe do it a little bit more justice, you know? We need a lot more justice. And for me, I don't want to see Woody Harrelson as Carnage anymore. I'm done with that. I need to think that Carnage symbiote needs to be passed on. And maybe, just maybe, I'm throwing this out there, Ben Riley. Comic fam, what do you think about that? And are you reading the current Venom War crossover storyline that features Carnage in the comic books? You gotta read some comic books. I mean, you know, collect your back issues, but read some funny books. Looking at the list at number eight. Have you watched Agatha yet? I finally did it. I don't get to sit down and watch much TV, so this took me time, but I finally watched the first episode right before coming here. Fantastic Four number 94, first appearance of Agatha. Now, I don't understand the hate for this. I really don't get Same it. Same here, dude. It's so good. After the first episode, I was like, I know what they did with WandaVision. So I'm like, okay, I, I kind of see what they're doing here. And, and I enjoyed it. Will this comment bite me in the butt after episode two and three? Maybe. But the fans are enjoying it. They went from a 51% approval rating to 83% after the third episode. And I don't know if that has to do with Mephisto or not because he was mentioned. But I doubt it. I think people are getting it. They're getting comfortable with whatever's happening with this show. And they're in. We had about $1,000 in sales above the 12-month average. A 6.0 sold for $125. That's up 37%. The 6.5 sold for the same price, $125. That's up 24%. And the 7.5 is up 6% for $175. We're talking about a book that's a minor key and is actually probably establishing itself through shows and whatever it's going to be going on with this character to be something greater than that. So to be able to buy a key in a 7.5, Edo, around $200, why not? Do yourself a favor. Whether you like this character or don't, or you don't like what's happening, who cares? It's pretty reasonable from a book that's, what, 53 years old? 
The next show on Disney Plus is going to be Eyes of Wakanda, so keep an eye out on Black Panther Keys. Well, we move on to number seven on the list with a book that may surprise some people. We have Amazing Spider-Man number two. Five sales above the recent 12-month average and a book from 1963. It's expensive. Over $14,200 in sales just took place. And this is one of those books. We have the first appearance of the Vulture, third appearance of Peter Parker in comic books. And in my experience in the comic collecting market, wouldn't you agree that people absolutely love this villain Spider-Man key? 1,000% they do. Number two is probably asked about and seen less than number three as the first appearance of Doc Ock. I rarely see a number two, which by the way, I chose to read this book this week. Okay, so every week I'm trying to read something on this list and I learned something that isn't generally discussed. This is the first time that Peter Parker starts taking photos for J. Jonah Jameson. I was like, oh, that's so interesting that he's taking a camera and selling it. And that's not really notated, at least I didn't see it on Key Collector, and I don't even think it's notated on CGC Slabs. Open your books, have a read, and learn something cool about him. This is when Peter Parker starts paying for his stuff, you know, being an adult. That's why Spider-Man's so damn cool. Relatable. The 1.0 you can get for $1,100 up 7%. The 1.8 up 11%. The 3.0 sold for $1,800 up 3%. 4.5 just clocked in a year high sale up 11% selling for 26.51 and a 7.5 sold for an increase of 2% this past week for $7,500. Now, we do have the Nicolas Cage coming to Amazon Spider-Man Noir and there's rumors that we may see Vulture in that series based in the Great Depression. I don't think that's what's spiking this book up. People love ASM number two and Maybe we can teach them something. Some peeps saw us grade the Daredevil one last week, peeped the vid, and they enjoyed that. So I thought maybe we can teach them something else today, how to look for some restoration. Let's stay true to this number. First Vulture, let's do second Vulture, Amazing Spider-Man number seven. This book, we're going to check for any color touch. Tom, hand me the flashlight. I mean the black light. <laughs> <laughs> We're using this black light to help us locate any color touch, and that's what the black light is going to do for us. So we open this book up to take a look on the interior and the exterior, and you can see when you look inside that there's little spots here of where color was added. Okay, you see it right here very clearly. If we come on the outside, there's a nice hard line that comes down. You can see that places that are supposed to have color breaks that don't have them are a clear tail sign that, oh, something was probably filled in there. So if you see a white line and for some reason it stops at the spine, that will be a general tell that color was filled in. Number six on the list is Amazing Spider-Man 15, the first appearance of Kraven the Hunter. Five sales exceeded the recent 12-month average, totaling $31,400. Clearly, we have a high sale to report on. And this book has been absent on the Hot 10 all year long. And the Kraven movie comes out in December. I'm truly shocked when you're telling me this is the first time on the Hot 10 because A, it's a Spider-Man key of a first appearance of a major character. Early, early Spider-Man. Great trailers, in my opinion. I like the violence. I like the aggression. I think it's going to be very interesting, and they're going to do a good job. But like you said, numbers haven't been that great for this. That's why it's not on this list. And I've owned this book quite a few times, and I don't even want to let it go for some of these numbers. I mean, generally, I've seen six fives for around $1,000, which is nuts. But now we get to see something different. We get to see some increases because a 7.5 is up 7% with a $2,220 sale. The 9.0 is up 16% for a $7,800 sale. And the 9.6 sold for a bonkers $19,800. Now, that isn't an increase. That is the same as it sold before. But that's the third all-time highest sale of that book. Aaron Taylor Johnson is literally on all fours running around and biting people's noses off in the trailer. And don't forget, we're going to get the rhino in this movie. It looks like it's going to be a little bit different take on him, but I'm glad that he's not in a mechanized suit. What do you guys think about this? Does the null effect make you a bit more excited about what Sony's going to do for Kraven? I don't know. It may be the saving grace, which brings us to number five on this list with Amazing Spider-Man 33 from 1966. This is when Peter Parker debuts his powerful strength, you know, has to find it within himself to push himself to a different level. Seven sales outdid the recent 12-month average, totaling over $4,600 in sales. And oh, there are so many, but Peep key collector for all of them. I'm going to give you the highlights. The 7 is up 19%, 7.52%, the 8.5 is up 24%, and 
a 9-4 sold for $1,800, up 37%. Why is this book on the list? I mean, why are people buying it to such staggering amounts? Because they love it. And there's a surprising amount of 9.8s on the census proving that people are gunning to try to get this book in high grade, pressing it, submitting it, and let's just show them the numbers to prove it. 51 copies in a 9.8. That's, that's a lot. And 32, the one prior, only has five. 34, a great Craven cover, only has seven. And 31, First Appearance of Gwen Stacy, a fantastic book, only has three. Why this has so many? Hard for me to truly contemplate. And it isn't just because it's a cool book, because number 31 is a cool book, too. So I don't know if this was preserved more. Maybe the print one was larger. Who knows? But it is what it is. And people love this book, and they're still paying aggressively. 51 copies, a 9-8 for $7,800. That's, that's a pretty high number for this book. Which brings us to the only surviving comic book on the list, post-Deadpool Wolverine hype. Before we get to that, join the mystery mail call. This is how you can support the video you're watching directly, and we'll have an excuse to send you comics every single month. It's $34.99. Go to commentson101.com. I send you four to five comics in there, and the guaranteed book is selling for more than the box costs. NYX number one, Trinity Comics exclusive, done by none other than the impeccable Peach Momoko. Link in the description. Let's talk about number four on the list with Incredible Hulk 340. Classic McFarlane spiking ever since Deadpool Wolverine. However, the 9.8 has been going down, largely because the census count has been rising. 19 sales above the 12-month average, $5,100 in sales. Six copies outsold the average in a 9.4. One up 45% for $350. Five other copies outsold the average in a 9.6 with a year high sale up 73% at $602. This book should be on a top 20 list every year. I don't care about movies or not. It's an unbelievable cover by an unbelievable artist. It's obtainable. There's a lot out there. It should be in a collection. It should be in your collection. Get this book. Pay whatever you feel comfortable paying for, but I feel like it should be in everyone's collection, this book. The last GPA sale for a 9.8, mind you, it's been averaging well over $1,000, sold for $898. there has been three new copies added to the census since we chatted about this book last a short four weeks ago. Number three, Star Wars number one, 1977. We all know this book. Everybody loves this book. Now, it is down, and it's down because it's a very common book, and we're seeing an explosion on the census in all grades, especially 9.8s, which is really going to affect, obviously, the upper end all the way down to the bottom. 12 sales above the 12-month average for $4,900. The 9.2 sold up 43% for $575. Four copies outsold the average in that grade. A 9.4 up 10% for $552. And the 9.6 up 4% for $937. You heard that right. Someone paid more money for a 9.2 than that 9.4. Some people don't care because this is a book that largely goes into PCs. And seeing books between... 9.0 and 9.6 sell aggressively, but no 9.8s tells me that that 9.8 price is very volatile. Well, in the last eight weeks alone, there's been an increase of 17 copies added to the census. And for a book that's been selling around the $3,400 marker all year long, it makes sense why that book is approaching the $3,000 marker. It's a lot of money for a 9.8, but when there are 17 new opportunities in eight weeks, the book's going to be coming down. And it has since its record was hit in 2022 of $9,600. Despite the failure or success of the TV shows, the comics have been fire. Since 2019, they've been filling in that lore between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And now, with the end of issue 50 for Star Wars, they're rebooting it, and now we're going to give us Star Wars number one again. A great launch-off point for us to start to fill in what happens after Return of the Jedi. Title Star Wars Battle of Jakku insurgency rising issue number one great jumping on point if you want to be filled in on all things star wars canon because since the marvel acquisition by disney they have been running it very well according to star wars fans i'm more of a trekkie <laughs> live long and prosper tom number two on the list dethroned bad omen style more in the shirt shout out davis Ryder. we have number two on the list marvel superhero secret wars issue number eight since Null showed up in the trailer, I'm starting to think that we're going to get Peter Parker Don in that symbiote costume. What do you think? No freaking way you don't take this opportunity as Sony to... Well, I can't say no way because it is freaking Sony. 
but they got to they ha- you have to you have to you cannot fumble this ball any larger than by not having Peter Parker Don the freaking symbiote. Over $4,800 in sales in seven days. And we've been saying numbers like that week over week for three weeks. Now, it's at number two because there is a bigger selling book at number one. Stay tuned because it's a monster. But this is a major origin title for Spider-Man. And we have a 9.6 up 32%. And six different copies outsold the recent 12-month average. The 9.8 sold for 540. That's 8% over the 12-month average. The 9.8 Newsy sold for $1,050 up 3%. And then, oh, we got a Mark Jeweler. Love me a Mark Jeweler. 8.0. Last sold in March for a record-setting sale of $537. Now up 69% with an all-new record of 910. It's a bit bonkers when you look back. Then in 1999, Sony spent $7 million for the rights to Spider-Man and have now earned $10 billion from that IP. Absolutely crazy. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. Let's talk about the number one hottest book in the world. We're talking over $15,000 spent on just public viewable sales on the internet in the last seven days for a book that came out in 2018. Welcome back to the number one slot. Venom 3, the first appearance of Null, has made collectors go freaking wild. And I want to remind everybody that we reported on over 59 eights selling for the standard cover A just last week. And there are over 30 additional 9 eights that have sold in just cover A alone in the last seven days. We have multiple covers to discuss, by the way, so buckle up. The fourth printing 9.8 is up 35% selling for 140. The second printing 9.8 is up 12% selling for 96. The San Diego Comic Con Stegman variant 9.8 up 34% selling for $191. Take a look at this. Cover A 9.6 selling for 210 on the high, up 44%. But 10 copies outsold the recent 12-month average in the last seven days. The 9.8, as alluded to, had a year-high sale for $320. And 31 copies outsold the recent 12-month average. And then we have the third printing. First cover appearance of Null. 9.8 sold for $408, up 20%. And wait for it. 17 copies at a 9.8 outsold the recent 12-month average. I don't think I've ever seen such quantity moved in such a short amount of time on a book so damn new. Clearly, people love Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's run on Venom. And the prospect of Null being the saving grace for Sony is, yes, not likely, but good enough to push this book to number one multiple weeks in a row. In two weeks alone, 87 9.8 copies sold. I mean, like you said, that quantity is nuts. Oh, and just cover A. Just cover A. And New York Comic Con's around the corner. This is going to be probably one of the hottest books on that show floor. I don't know what you guys think. We've we've dug at, at Sony some here, okay? We have, but they're taking chances on, on villains and bad boys here. So I'm kind of excited that someone is taking that risk. I don't know where they're going to go, but I'm holding on to find out. Let us know what you think about Null. In the comment section below, are you buying this book? I want to know why they're buying this book. Is it because they have faith in Sony? Do they think that this is a possible mulligan for them as like a franchise to uplift their spidey characters that they're trying to retain? Or is it because of your love for Venom and what Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman did? Let us know. And then, of course, as always, geek responsibly. Enough said.